Griever and Arlene here, and this is episode two of our six-part series of welcoming you to the hobby, and in this episode, we are going to help you choose your blaster. Which or, is the most difficult part, in my opinion. It can be. Because there's, there's a lot of choices out there's there. There's so freaking many. Yeah. Like, I just look at your wall, and I'm like, that's... It's a lot of different things. It is. It's, and it's actually, a lot to, I do, like, what I, do I want? What do... You know, what, yeah, and what's honestly, the I do choices? have a lot of representation on my back wall, too. Did you so. really not realize that till now? Not really. <laughs> it's just, this is the shit I like. <laughs> Mind you, I literally just look around the shop, I'm like, or the shop, and it's like, this, it's a lot. It gets overwhelming, which works best for what I want. Exactly. So, I'm here with another set of questions. <laughs> I'm so prepared, aren't I? This is. <laughs> All right, so. Again, I am a conduit coming in from the outside. Yes. If you have any additional questions, please make sure you leave them down below, and we will answer them in a future video. But hopefully, my questions will at least cover the basis. I'm going to add this as a note in the previous in the previous episode, but yes. we should point out like kind of like a who the hell are we kind of thing. So Arlene here has been part of my has been part of the channel for a few years, um, mainly a by trade, a uh, cosplayer and prop builder. I have actually been part of the Nerf community hobby for over 10 years, and also dabble in that stuff as well. But So it's kind of like a the outsider and quasi-expert, I guess you can say. You're advanced, intermediate yeah. to advanced. Yeah, I mean, there there is shit in this hobby that goes beyond me and even all my years but i feel like i have a f i've been around long enough to where yeah i can definitely guide guide people Good. so at least you have the competence to do so enough <laughs> there you go that's why we have this channel to begin with yes all right on to the questions that hopefully a lot of you are asking as well yes so what are the different types of blasters because you like give out different brand names and uh, as i mentioned in our first video like, you'll say, like, the name, and I go, uh-huh, mm -hmm. okay. Clearly there is, like, I don't want to say a hierarchy, but there's definitely different categories, and they have their own names that translate into your brain, but not into mine, because they're right. not common known. So if you could just kind of break down okay. different types of blasters, things to keep in mind when choosing which one you want, go on a rant. Okay. I want a rant. <laughs> so, as mentioned we briefly touched on this in the last episode. You basically, it breaks down to like kind of the base of two things. It's either you have a pistol or you have a rifle, a short boy or a long boy. Um, there are actually a few, I guess you could say heavies, uh, which are just big monster blasters. Bigger, bigger boys. Um, those are honestly very few and far between now. Um, those aren't really around much anymore. Um, but you have things like uh, the Nerf Vulcan, which is a giant, like, kind of machine gun-esque blaster that is belt-fed and is a ton of fun um, to use. Uh, then you also have the Nerf Rivals Prometheus, which is this huge hopper-fed rival blaster uh, that, again, you just hold it like a big heavy thing and just, like, lay waste. But... The, the gist of what, what types of blasters there are, the, it, it breaks down to basically, is it a Springer or is it a flywheel? Okay. Uh, there are subcategories to it, like there are blasters that work on strings, uh, bungee cords. What? Again, very, very few and far between. Okay. Nerf made like a handful of them, but they weren't very popular. Um, the hobby side of things, we have made a few of those, but again... They're not really usually used very much. Mm -hmm. um, there have been dabblings into actually making um, high-end competitive blasters, HPA and LPA compatible. I have no idea what that means. That is... <laughs> I, I was about to explain it, Thank so you. that's fine. Thank you. But um, that's more of your, that more goes into like airsoft and paintball things. Oh, okay. So those are usually... Nit nitrous, right? Kind of. Okay. Um, AP, HPA is high pressured air. LPA is low pressured air. Oh, okay. Um, but basically, you're using a air tank on it. 
So those are definitely the more, that's definitely a more of an advanced thing. But again, that's also few and far between. Like people have started using it, but you really can't use those in parks or in a public setting. I was about to say, that's, to, sorry to cut you off, but yeah. are those considered like Nerf or foam blaster guns? Or? It, it's still considered a foam blaster okay. or a foam dart blaster. But the only thing is, though, because you're now putting that air tank on it, for a public perspective, you're now making it look like a paintball marker or an airsoft gun. Yeah. And those are not allowed in public. I was about to say, those are like so, street regulated or whatever that's yeah. called. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> sure of the exact terminology, but basically those are, you're, you cannot use those in public. Okay. You get in a lot of trouble for those. I could imagine as such. Um, that's a lot of power. We talked about yeah. bruises a little bit in the last one. That yeah. really, that, that yeah. was a mark. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can regulate it, obviously, to, like, you know, fit, like, an FPS cap and all. But, again, it's it's the public perspective of it. Got it. So. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to cut you off. Back no, no, into the fine. different types of, of blasters. No, that's fine. <laughs> um, and then you also have, like, like, how something would hold ammo. You have single-shot pistols, which you just front-load a dart into it, pull back on... A pr some kind of a priming handle to prime your spring and you know you're able to shoot one at a time uh you have revolver blasters like the maverick strong arm hammer shot um that work on a cylinder a lot of x shot blasters are actually uh, utilize the cylinders or their single shots mm -hmm. um you also have clip fed blasters where you have a clip or a magazine that holds a certain amount of darts that you load and fire out of. Uh, and those, again, will vary because X-Shot has its own types. The standard is the Nerf Elite Clip or the Nerf okay. Dart Clip. Um, that's always been kind of the standard. Uh, dart Zone has kind of mimicked and copied that along with uh, Worker over the years so that you're able to utilize their particular brands be compatible with Nerf and oh. vice versa. So if you have like a bunch of Nerf clips, but you prefer like the Dart Zone Blaster or whatever, if it can use a full size clip, you can use a Nerf clip in it. Okay, that's good to know. Again, for the most part. Over the years, the clips have changed, so sometimes they work with others. Even in the Nerf brand itself, clips are sometimes not backwards compatible. Lovely. So, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> kind of going back into the I guess different ways to load it when you actually fire, because we've run into this issue when you hand me one. I am a weakling. I'm yeah. trying to fix that by going to the gym more often, but like some of them I just don't have, I guess, the strength for. Right. I'm assuming that's usually the ones that you mod, not really stock, as, as yeah. you mentioned before. Stock is... So I guess it's, what are the pros and cons? Maybe might be strength, but are there other like pros and cons to consider when figuring out which type of reload function you want to go with um my preferred since i my preference has always been a springer um my preferred priming has always been a front undermounted prime so basically for for layman's terms a shotgun prime okay um i, I actually do prefer having like kind of a shotgun grip on it um i have i feel like that, that's easier to aim because you're using two hands right um and it also works very well on the long on the long boys but uh there are those like you can see on the back wall here uh i have four i have uh, front angled foregrips on them i have the uh the shotgun prime on my saturn which is this one right here uh my nexus pro has a front foregrip uh, that I used to prime. You can also swap those out for like angled foregrips. So it's kind of like a combination of the two where you're still kind of gripping it kind of shotgun ish, but you have an angle on it. So you have more of a grip rather than just like you could possibly slip off of it depending okay. on if your hands are like, you know, wet or sweaty or whatever. Which I would assume during a Nerf or in the hot sun. That's, yes. that's something certainly to consider. Yeah. I tend to, <laughs> I, I tend to usually wear uh, gloves when I play. So but, yeah, so you have those types, um, and then it's a matter of working into what you want to use. Yeah. Um, 
in regards to that because besides those primes, you also, I'm sorry, I straight off topic for a quick second there. <laughs> Get back on track. There we go. So you have those primes. You also have uh, a top prime, which instead of being undermounted, you have it on top. So, and that's usually... I feel like that's kind of an awkward grip. It can be. Um, the most common one, you, you'll see that. You can see that in Busby. Um, Dart Zone really doesn't have too many of it. The only one is clo that would be close to it is their pistols. Yeah, the pistol, the pistols in the A and the Aon Pro, which is a very, very small compact um, clip fed. I like pistol. small compact clips. Yes. Because again, I'm little and weak, so those tend that's to fine. work best for me. But then my thumb is not strong enough to pull back those. That well, that's the, those are the hammer, the hammer prime ones. Those that's actually mainly kind of a Nerf thing. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, not many uh, things outside of Nerf use hammer primes. Mm -hmm. Um, there is one for Busby, but honestly, that, that thing is horrible. It's okay. an ergonomic nightmare. Oh, yeah, no, don't, I don't like that. Again, functionality that, is always, like, my main, yeah. my main thing. Yeah. Um, if you're, if you don't want to, like, bother with the top prime, or if you have small arms or something like that, and you don't want to use the shotgun grip, yeah. there's actually also the, um, the, a, um, a T-pull, or, um, a pullback, which... Essentially is you have a direct connection to your plunger rod, which is usually what's priming the pistol, mm -hmm. or blaster, I should say. And you just basically pull that straight back into your prime, which is actually what the knife finder is. Oh, okay. See, that makes, again, for me, using my whole arm instead of like, just like my hand or something yeah. like that, that seems to be better suited for, for my needs, at least specifically. Right. But interesting yeah, to know. So, for some, for someone like that, I would recommend either a, which would be, which would I think be called a ring pull, because sometimes it's either a ring or it's a T, or you wind up just having a, um, you have to hack off the back end of it, because <laughs> you can't get your spring off any other way, and you replace it with basically a key ring. So. You got it. My next question then goes into the battery operated ones. Okay. Because I've. The ones I have, I tend to go for the battery operated. I, I know you hate the sound of the motor. I'm not a fan of it either. But I don't have to prime those. No, that and that is true. So. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the battery operated ones are obviously you don't have to prime them. You just have to worry about batteries at that point. Yeah. Um, that could get expensive depending on what kind of batteries you're using. Like if you're just using regular standard double A's. You're constantly replacing those. So you're always having to put out, depending on where you're going for them, you know, anywhere from like, you know, five to like 15 bucks for a pack of batteries to use your blaster yeah. that you just spent like 30 or $40 on yeah. in the store. So, But then, you know, I'm not running out of strength, especially like in a competition True. area where I'm like, oh God, I can't pull on this thing anymore to reload yeah. it. And, but also there, there is a somewhat of a downside on that one too, because batteries also add weight to it. Uh, so sure. you're taking basically what's essentially a giant piece of plastic, and now you're putting a metal weight into it. Yeah. When it comes to the double A's, it's usually not bad, um, especially if you're using something like I have on my wall over there, um, no. my Strifle, uh, which, again, we'll get into a little bit more nomenclature in regards to that into the later modding episode, <laughs> but that rifle is essentially a Strife with an extension on it, so I can hold it as a rifle, and the batteries really don't mean a whole hell of a lot on it. The Vulcan, however, or the Prometheus, the Vulcan uses six C batteries. Oh, Lord! Yeah, so, I mean, you already have, like, a really big, I, I'm chunky just, I'm blaster. Just, I'm just imagining those old-school boomboxes that yeah. required six C batteries. <laughs> yeah, the battery tray is, like, bigger than my hand. Damn. And... You're talking about, one, an already fairly big, chunky piece of plastic, and now you're adding 6C batteries to the back of it. You're making it very back-heavy, yeah. or wherever the batteries go. Um, so that's another thing to keep in consideration. Uh, Rival did try and offset this for a bit with actually selling branded rechargeable batteries. Um, it only worked with... More sustainable, too. It, true. However, it only worked with, I think, one two of the blasters at tops um again 
putting electronics into it right. makes it a little bit more expensive. So, right. understandable. But they opted to use that for, like, one or two of the blasters, but then they just basically went back to it's it's getting batteries. Got it. Uh, the Prometheus, the big chunky thing that I had mentioned, and I'll have a picture or some, we'll be rolling here somewhere <laughs> with it, but that has... That came with a rechargeable battery, so you don't have to worry about it. But again, it's a matter of, you have to keep it charged at that point. Got it. So, yeah. There's the, I mean, those are honestly always the pros and cons with everything. Like, a stock a stock dart blaster is going to be very easy to use for most people. Yeah. A flywheel blaster can be picked up by everybody. If you modify the springers, you're adding weight on the prime, which can deter people or just make it a little bit harder to use like you're not going to you're going to lose a rate of fire or it's just going to be real it could eventually even be too hard for you to use in yeah. certain cases yeah um <laughs> again working on that yeah i, I can now do do, do a push-up pretty well i'm very That's proud good. of that <laughs> yay uh so i think that kind of does then roll into my next question which is it does seem like a lot of these guns require two hands can't, uh, can't do like the old west slinger one in each hand for a lot of them for the most part, no. Okay. Unless you have either something that is battery operated, like you can two you can two hand you can two hand you can dual wield strikes. Okay. Um, when it comes to a Springer pistol, you have to have it be able to you have to be able to manage it single handed if you wanted a dual wield. Like the hammer shots have always been great for dual wielding because okay. it's the hammer prime or. Um, going beyond just the hammer shot because there are others um on the old nerf or bell line which was a nerfs brand that trying to get the girls into the game um, I heard, you got me a few of those yes <laughs> and you like them i did i still have my little angel one in my desk at work yes <laughs> but it's very discreet i like yes it. and it's they, the colors i enjoy yeah. i'm not gonna lie <laughs> They, they catered actually, to me. How dare they? I, I know how dare. <laughs> but they actually made more hammer. They actually made a couple of hammer prime pistols for okay. the Rebel line, which one was called the Sweet Revenge, which was basically the girl version of the hammer shot. And honestly, I like the design of the Sweet Revenge there you a go. whole lot more. By the way, I love how you keep calling it Rebel. Because that's what it's called. Is it not Rebel? No, it was Rebel. Oh. R-E- no, it was just Rebel. R E B. L-L-E. I thought there was only one L. No, there's two. Oh, well then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Sorry, but, side note. <laughs> but um, because those were all hammer prime pits, and then there's the four victory, which I kind of like, which is just a four shot thing. You have the double strike, which is a nerf derringer, essentially. Um, but those are all hammer prime, so you can easily, for the most part, be able to have one in each hand and just boom, 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 boom. Uh, See, that sounds fun to me. <laughs> right. But when you get into other things like um, a majority of the, the single-shot pistols or even the clip-fed pistols, um, if it's not battery-operated, you need two hands for it because once you fire a single shot, you ha- then have to prime it to fire the second shot. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to do when you have a bunch of stuff in your hand. Yeah. So That's where holsters and other accessories I assume come involved in. Yes. I know reload is also another question I have because I know like specifically for a lot of just the front end loaders mm. is what I at least always call them. I'm not sure if that's actually yeah. what they are. It's you have to put in each individual dart into the little slot. So mm. I'm a fan of the clips. I think those yes. are cooler but I've noticed that the clip ones don't really usually come with one handedness or if I'm Again, that would be that would be the you would need something battery operated. Like, yeah. Actually, for example, the Worker Nightingale. This is a battery operated pistol that is clip fed. So, essentially, if I had two of these, I could dual wield them. However, okay, and then you have this pistol, which is the Dart Zone Pro Mark II. It has an internal clip, but same concept as if it had a drop clip. This is a Springer. So each shot I have to prime, prime each one. I wouldn't be able to really dual wield this. Yeah. So now that that's definitely what I noticed is that most uh, hand operated ones with clips, you have to use two hands. Essentially, yeah. is what I have noticed. Yeah. So. If, uh, if if you tend to use springers, 
you're only going to be able to really utilize one. It's very hard to akimbo those. Yeah. If you're using a battery-operated blaster, technically you can akimbo those all day long, even if you have two clip-fed rifles. You can do that until you're empty, then you have to put one down to reload. Well, that, that's but, what I'm thinking. Holsters, accessories, or like if you have right. like a strap, sling it on the back, grab yeah. a reload. There's a lot of lot of things to keep in mind here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so good to know that there are different combinations. Yes. I just, they might not be as prevalent in the market than I've seen, so. Right. And then, of course, you know, getting into, like you had mentioned about the clips and all that stuff. Yeah. There is also the... Um, the dart types themselves. Yes. Which, again, as we... I love we, the little torpedo ones. Yes. <laughs> uh, as, as, we, as we touched upon in the previous episode, um, you have a variety of, am of ammo as well to use. Um, you have your standard elite dart, uh, which, is your st which is a three-inch foam dart with a uh, rubber tip on, on the end of it. Uh, those have been more... Those have always been kind of the standard. It's just been one of those things of over the years, we've realized that at the higher velocities, those don't really work because of weight balance, okay. which is where we got our half darts from. Because you take off half of that weight and yeah. it's a much more balanced dart. Uh, you also have mega darts, which are big chunky red darts that Nerf made, yes. which those blasters, I mean, they'll fire those darts pretty well, but you can then modify those darts, or if you can modify those blasters to accept normal darts, those work even way better, because then all you're doing is just changing kind of like a barrel, so to speak. Yeah, and it still or, has and that some, power yeah, to you push forward the big ones. Right. But, something detailed. Exactly, so, you know, it's just a change in distribution. Uh, you have rival rounds, which are little foam balls that aren't just exclusive to Nerf. Uh, Dart Zone has made them as well. Um, so is X Shot, and yeah, those those work. That ammo type is actually great for indoors usually, because you have no matter what you do with it, you usually have at least a good like 50 feet of range. Okay on those where they will stay on but then after that so many factors come into play because <laughs> it's basically essentially if any if anyone's familiar with airsoft you have the hop up to control the spin of your bb it's essentially the same thing you have a hop up at the end of it it's not usually adjustable um but when the rival round goes out you're able to you know figure out where things are going after so many feet though it will Veer off course just automatically. And if you're playing outdoors, wind is always a factor. These are just foam. There's no core to it. There's no real weight other than just the foam made. It's so, made so out. So the, the wind will take wherever it damn well. Goes. Oh yeah. So <laughs> yeah, rival rival can work outdoors on non-windy days. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And then I'd be remiss to mention, you know, the chunks, um, the girth darts, uh, Mega XL. Which is which are these blue darts that Nerf just started making, and they are essentially double the size of the mega darts. Yeah. And fun little. They look like Bill. Little, little thing in Mario. Yeah, but <laughs> but but the, the the fun little. Little thing. The little. Giant thing. The, the <laughs> little the little note I just want to throw out here because this is just like a fun little huh, um, because all the darts usually will have holes in the back of it because usually there's a peg or it's, it helps with airflow and everything. If you take a, nerf, a, a standard Nerf dart, you can actually fit it inside of a Mega Dart and you can take a Mega Dart and fit it inside a Mega XL. I'll show this to you off camera. But why? Or is it just that's just how it is? That's just how, how they got manufactured. That's too funny. But yeah, oh that God. works. I, I throw that out there for a fun little note. That's very fun. Speaking yeah. of fun notes, so this question I don't think is really related to much, but so suction cups on the ends of darts. Ah, uh, yes, the old suction cup darts. I 
I like them because then I know where they are and I can pick them off the wall a little bit easier. Yes. Instead of trying to search for them under the ground and or on the ground and under furniture. But I have learned suction cups. One, not great. Because if it's not like a straight shot, it ain't gonna stick. Yeah. But also, I know, I assume <laughs> weight distribution also yeah. gets affected in yeah, things the, of that. The, what What is your personal opinion on suction cups on darts? <laughs> suction cups on darts are good on very low powered blasters to just plink around the house. And okay. if you happen to hit something that has a flat enough surface for the suction cup to stick to, then yeah, it's a fun little thing. But, but is it, my, essentially my question is, are they utterly useless? Essentially, yeah. Okay. They do nothing. Don't invest yeah. in the suction cup tar. Yeah. There, th- Nerf used to make them ages ago. Back yeah, when that's the what end I remember, stri- that's what that's I remember what, as a kid. Yeah, when the end strike line first really started taking off, they had suction cup darts for the front loaders. So you could get them for like the uh, the Night Finder or even the Maverick actually came with suction cup darts. But then as years went on, they realized, oh, no one really uses them. So because they don't stick to anything. Yeah. Sorry, I that was something little me. I just thought that is so cool. Stick to stuff. It never freaking sticks to stuff. <laughs> so I just wanted to throw that in there. Just to cover bases. That's totally fine. Oh my god. Alright. You covered so much of my stuff already. Um, so, where to buy them? Uh, is, is kind of my next big question. Because now that I have an idea of what I'm looking for. Of my, what I want to look to. First thing I think of is like. Chain stores like Target, Walmart. Or just even Amazon. Are there other places to go? Those are honestly your... For, for something starting, that is your best bet. Um, Target usually has... Uh, Target has a wide variety of things. Um, for the most part, if you go in-store, you'll see a lot of Nerf stuff. You'll also see a lot of X-Shot stuff, and you're starting to see some Dark Zone stuff there as well. Um, Walmart has usually a fairly decent-sized Nerf section. They still have Busby Blasters. That's usually where you're always able to find those. Uh, you can also... Have also find them in kind of like not dollar stores but like the um i don't want to say cheap chains but like five below five below well five below has their own stuff but they'll oh, they'll, okay. occasion, they'll occasionally <laughs> actually have some like um x shot x shot or nerf items that are usually like they're really facing them out and they just want to get the help rid of them that's actually how i got like five four victories was my local five below happened to have them as they were getting, as Rebel was finally dying out. They had like four, five, they had like five, four victories, and I'm like, twenty five bucks for five blasters. Yes. Damn. And those are. That's a steal. Yeah, and those are still really good blasters. Um, but Walmart will have Nerf, and they'll have Busby. They also have a line called Adventure Force. Don't get this. Don't think, oh, that's a whole another thing because that's what the Nexus Pro is under. The Nexus Pro is actually a Dart Zone blaster. Adventure Force is Walmart's brand. Okay. It's like it's like a specific Walmart only brand that they have people make stuff for. So while Dart Zone made the Max Striker, which is essentially a Nexus. A, a, uh, I guess you can say kind of an updated version of the Nexus Pro. They made the Nexus Pro, but they sell it under the Adventure Force line in Walmart. Okay. So. Mind you, again, the names of the guns and the brands and stuff right. still kind of going a little bit over my head. Right. Um, so when it comes to. And then, of course, Amazon has literally everything. It, it, it's Amazon. Yeah. Um, Question or not, will they deliver it to you is another okay. thing. But I covered that in another video anyway. But yeah, so I think one thing, again, talking about selecting your blasters, we mentioned this in the first episode as well. We, wow, we covered a lot in the first episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like you said, the uh, Nerf, that's where it started. Those are your general, mm-hmm. kind of the premiere, if you will, like right. the, the default. Um, and then I believe you said Busby, that's more for, like, I guess, smaller, like for me. Yeah. I might want to head more towards those. Yeah. Um, and then, I guess, Dark Zone. Dark where Zone would, and X-Shot. What, where would you categorize those? Like, for, again, I didn't know that Busby made things a little bit smaller for mm-hmm. petite humans. Um, so, 
that's great for me to know because I know Nerf. It, it does tend to be a little bit more difficult for me. Yeah. So who, what what attributes would be more for Dart Zone or X Strike or any of those? Um, X Shot is okay. Well, I'll start. I'll start off with Nerf. Nerf. Yes. N- Nerf is, as Jack would say, the mothership. It's where everything all started. You have a variety of things that you can get covered under there. Uh, currently, their their current line, the Elite 2.0 series, that has honestly been, within the hobby, a very big failure. Because when you are modifying a blaster, you need to open it up and take it apart and do this and do that to it. Even though the blasters say, do not modify... That's for legal reasons. That's, yes, that is for legal reasons. Um, what Hasbro did with the Elite 2.0 series is they solvent welded shells together. So, okay. so Nerf a lot not of, great for modding, is what I am hearing. Old okay. Nerf is. Okay. New Nerf is very, very hit or miss. Okay. Like, the new Trailblazer, which is a hammer, shot, a hammer primed pistol that they put out under the Elite 2.0 series... That actually, you can fully take apart. It's that's actually a really nice hammer pistol. That's a very nice pistol. It's got a good, a good uh, amount of onboard ammo you can hold into it. And again, it's hammer primed, and it also does have what, from what I've been told, I have no problem with it though. Um, a smaller handle, so you may actually wind up liking okay. it. Okay. Um, Would you recommend that as like someone who wants to get into modding? That's like be their first stop, just to test it out. Um. Or is there a different Honestly, I would say if you're if you're gonna look at modding and you want to get a feel for everything, your best bet would actually probably be Busby. Okay. Busby or or certain Adventure Force blasters because you have a variety in those because you will find things in there that are just um, pullback prime single shot pistols that are fairly cheap that you can futz around with and if it breaks fine i go back to the store i spend another ten dollars okay um goodwill is also actually another good source for it because as people get older and their moms clean out their closets and whatnot and get rid of stuff believe me we've all been there i love you mom i do but don't you already did all you all you could it hurt a little bit but i understand i understand uh, I should have just taken it with me. <laughs> I, I, I had that happen over the years. I'd be playing with something and then, you know, not touch it for a while and then all of a sudden go looking for it and where is it? Something that but, happens. I understand. I get it as a minimalist yeah. and a chucker of things I don't use anymore. But, you will fi- <laughs> but you'll find, like, you potentially, you can literally find anything at Goodwill. Yeah. Like, as Captain Xavier will always say, you will find a ubiquitous maverick. Um, <laughs> but you'll find strong arms. You'll find retaliators. You'll find rival blasters. You'll find dart zone stuff. You'll find Adventure Force, Busby, X Shot. Um, they may not be all complete, but at that point, then you could always just get it to, again, tinker with. Yeah. And just build your skill on that rather than going, you know, out buying like a $30 blaster. With all the bells and whistles, focusing on the one part, messing that up, and now you have to go get another three out. You find it at Goodwill for like five bucks. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have all the accoutrements, but you then have something you can work with. Got it. So, all right. So that's I think that covers Nerf and Busby pretty well. What mm-hmm. about those other brands? Um, X Shot is also another good brand for getting a feel for things mm-hmm. because. A Again, feel for modding or modding for... and just even everything overall because okay. while not everything X Shot has is backwards compatible with the other brands, they have a variety of things. Like they have things that are clip fed, they have things that are pump action, they have things that are top rhyme, they have things that are pullback, they have the revolvers. Um, they're a good brand to get a feel, get an idea for a feel for, um, but also they're not overtly expensive. Like, you can find a decent X-Shot blaster for, like, 20 bucks. Okay. And it have, like, a 40-dart drum. Ooh. That's okay. pump action. That, so. That makes me a bit more interested. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, dart Zone is, I honestly, I would say Dart Zone is more for the, if you already know what you're looking for. Because okay. Dart Zone can be a little bit more expensive a little bit 
not pricier, but it's definitely a little more expensive than X Shot. Um, but that kind of stuff is those you're going to start investing in. Like as I had mentioned, the Nexus Pro, which is a competitive blaster. It's fifty bucks, but still fifty bucks for something that you're not sure on. But you could get something similar for like twenty bucks. I would get the $20 blaster, see how you like it, and if you want, then upgrade to the $50 blaster. I, you know? I like to go with, uh, oh, God, I'm forgetting his name from Mythbusters. Adam Savage. Yes, Adam Savage. His, his rule of thumb is always, if you need something, buy the cheapest thing, and if you use it enough that it breaks, then you can invest in the, the big one. Yes. So I, I, I love that way of thinking. So yeah. that, that sounds like a... So mm -hmm. start small, and then you can always build yeah. up. Because then, as as you get a feel for things and you know what works best for you, uh, whether it be a Springer or flywheel, you know, then you start building on. You know, do you like the pistols more? Do you like something small and compact that you can just like have like two pistols on you and like a ton of magazines, or something that's just like you know, you run around like a heavy juggernaut. <laughs> um, you know, you work you work your way up through those things, and then eventually you'll find where you want, or you know what works best for you and then that's where you start looking at okay so here's the cheapo version this is the next stage up do i like this one or even the one beyond that and be like do i want to go to that and then move up or do i want to just shoot for that one yeah so okay that answers a lot of my questions that i've had i know besides again those big retailers there's also quite a few 3d printed yes the 3d printed one um i would say wait until you know what you like okay because, as I had mentioned, if you if you like a pump action Springer, maybe try a Nexus out first, and then if you really really like the Nexus but you don't want to put all the money into modifying that one, your next option would be either um, the 3D printed Caliburn or Talonclaw. Then you would maybe look at that, but at that point you're talking about a much more significant investment because. That's 50 bucks. Depending on who you get it from, a 3D printed punk, pump action Springer can go anywhere from 100 to like 200 plus. Well, because you're customizing it kind yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. You are getting you are getting something much more customized to you because you're picking the colors and all that kind of stuff, and also obviously you're paying for the time of printing, the building, and all that kind of stuff. You can get hardware kits. And if you happen, happen to have a 3D printer, print it yourself. But again, that's going into more of the modding aspect yes. of things. So who or where can I go for those type, for those kits, for those prints? For those kits, um, Foamdemic is a good is a good source to get uh, pre-built 3D printed blasters for reasonable price. Um, Silver Fox Industries, they uh, do 3D printed blasters. They're a little bit more on the expensive side, but they also use they're also really good um same thing with out of darts out of darts actually does um not just the hardware kits but also the 3d printed parts and also sells the completed ones okay uh gavin fuzzy who is actually a nerfer out of singapore um he has a blaster called the sbl which is a 3d printed pump action springer uh that everyone really does enjoy um, but because it's also come from Singapore, it's much more on the expensive side. But Going again, international. But again, if you want to invest into it, you know that's a good. That would be a good source for those as well. Excellent. Okay. Gives me a good idea yeah. for go shopping. Go shopping. Also, I totally <laughs> overlooked Worker, which is another company that does high-end blasters as well. Um, there are others, but we're not going to go too much into that. But Worker is another uh, company that does. Not 3D printing, but um, they actually do sell build-your-own blasters. Okay. But again, you, that's going to be a big money commitment. Yeah. Because you're talking about to build your own. With it's like building of, your own PC. It's like... Yeah. The shell will be nice and cheap. It's like, oh, it's 50 bucks for the shell. Then you're talking about the springs, the parts, which are usually all metal. You're talking about probably an investment of like anywhere... From Depending on what you're building, anywhere from like two to three hundred dollars for one of wow. those. So you really have to want it yes. and know what you want before yes. you even get started. Yeah, that's why. Even though it's 
you know, it's easy to say, oh, well, that's just a cheap piece of crap. Yeah, but you're going to learn from that cheap piece of crap. And I'd rather get that cheap piece of crap <laughs> and learn off of that exactly. than spend mo spend good money on something good, break it, and then be out that money and it's sad. <laughs> Very fair point. So. All right, that kind of covers all of my kind of beginning questions, at least about blasters in particular. Now right. I know what to look for and what would work best for me and what for what I want. Right. So. And hopefully it helped you out as well. So Hopefully so. Again, any additional questions, leave them below. Yes. And we'll make sure to try to answer them in the next video if we can. Yes. So, and again, thank you for joining us for this video. And as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know what your favorite, uh, for what your favorite blaster is. Uh, Springer, Flywheel, or throw out the name. I probably know it. You won't, <laughs> I do but not. I won't. But again, I can then Google it and find out. Yes, so there you go. <laughs> or just go to him, my, my source of all this yes, knowledge. Either way. And, yeah. oh, don't forget to click that little uh, bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel and getting more episodes of Welcome Me to the Hobby. And we also do have a P.O. box, so if you want to send us some snail mail, do like getting letters. They're nice. It's nice and old school reads. Yes. But, again, thank you all for joining us. We will see you guys next time. Bye. Later.